Hello my soccer universe to the review of the Champions League action this week and first things first wardrobe choice was really really tough I mean the obvious ones would be either Porto or Inter I have only one Porto jersey and I'm gonna have it up there uh, and for Inter Milan fan should I really wear Inter uh, so it's enough that there are two Inter jerseys uh, in this background as far and so I decided, well, is it a Dortmund or Barcelona? Oh, let's take a yellow for Dortmund, Barcelona jersey. Well, Barcelona also played in yellow, but yeah. Kind of, in a way, from my point of my reflection, uh, kind of reflects that the action was kind of uh, weird this week. I mean, Tuesday was definitely a bad, better one. I think both Tuesday games were uh, good watches, uh, high-intensity games. And then yesterday was, blah, this was a really, 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 really tough watching, I would say. But yeah, we have the first legs in the back. I would say, let's talk about these four games. And I actually want to talk with probably the most interesting one, Inter against Atletico or the Simeone der uh, the Derby, uh, if you would like, because we had Inter flying really high in, in the league, but an Atletico Madrid team that under normal circumstances, you probably would favor but this Atletico Madrid team is kind of a box of chocolates you never know what's coming out of it um, but they could you would think that potentially they could shut down Inter or not well the answer is that Inter dominated the game left and right and probably should have won by more than one goal um, they started with a lot of pressure, they ratched it up, they ratched it up. Uh, Atletico Madrid were bending, bending uh, strongly but never breaking. Uh, one point was that at the half Arnautovic had to come on for Turam who was uh, picked up an injury and Arnautovic brought a little bit uh, even more attacking flavor but he also missed two really big chances and finally after Lautaro Martinez shot got blocked he puts in the rebound in the 79th minute for a very well deserved Inter win however as I said there was the chance there to make it two um, also, I've saw, and I said it already in my short video, I found it very interesting that after Inter got that first goal, I actually thought that Atletico Madrid um, then were pushing more for the equal as Inter were going for the second. I mean, there was a big chance by Morata where he, if he places that head, head, all right, we might talk about a 1-1 one, one, uh, steal in that sense. I uh, also need to mention, I do not understand the choice of the Atletico Madrid jersey. When I think a red white kit, if you want with red pants, would have worked just about fine. It would have provided way more contrast than this turquoise monstrosity ever did. So in that sense, it was not a pleasing watch for for, for me because I mean, Atletico Madrid almost went into stealth mode uh, on that green pitch. Yeah, didn't help it. Uh, for the eye, way more appealing was PSV against Dortmund. That was a true even battle, and it was also one where I think PSV for, uh, faced the first stiff test since Arsenal won. To be fair, has to be said. Uh, but in the league, you know, yes, uh, Feyenoord beat them in the cup, but they usually have a uh, very easy op opposition. With Dortmund, they really had tough op opposition, and it was an absolutely even game. And we will talk about some controversy in there, but I have to say that the 1 1 is fairly reflective of what was shown on what was on display here. There's also quite some connections between him and Peter Boss was a Dortmund manager. Uh, and then we have, of course, Daniel Marlen, who came from uh, PSV to Dor Dortmund. So both teams, uh, you could see, I mean, Peter Boss makes, made, made the absolute, uh, made, made a point of it, greeting every single Dortmund staff member, being very friendly ahead of the game. I found this rather in, 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 in interesting. And as I said, the game was really uh, intense, Interesting. Uh, it took a turn towards Dortmund when Marlen, after Sabitzer assist, although I, it was more or less all Marlen there, uh, from a very acute angle, puts the ball into net, but I think it took a wicked deflection that they had to go in there. Um, and so it was 1 0 Dortmund with PSV actually missing also a few chances, ch ch but as I said, up, up, up and down. And then a big controversy early in the second half when Mats Hummels. Uh, attempts to play the ball, he does play the ball and seemingly in, in, in a tackle also takes out the attacker. 
The thing is, uh, I think when you see it at first, it looks a little bit clumsy. Then you see the first replay. Yes, he plays a ball, but he also may play the opponent who falls down. But then there's one replay where he barely touches the boot of the attacker. It's one of those where I think VAR should have gotten in. Because that, as much as I think that the ensuing 1-1 by De Jong was deserved, that was a really, really rough decision. I think there Dortmund were admittedly a little bit robbed uh, as well. As I said, the final result is okay. I think it's very reflective of the game, but that penalty decision was <laughs> it's not. It was not a penalty. Let's put it that way. Then yesterday, Porto Ars Arsenal. Um, Porto managed to have the game played their way by breaking Arsenal's rhythm and I Porto have not been great in the league they also has to be said they have been losing games they're off the pace of the two Lisbon teams um, and so Arsenal is kind of, uh, Arsenal probably says oh, we're we, we gonna win this easily no it was not Porto with many fouls they gave Arsenal ball broke broke the rhythm and then here and there hit them on the counter attack and they did this very well I mean in the first, first half there was already a pretty big chance for Galeno who uh, yanks it against the um, uh, post the ball comes straight back to him and he just has the presence of mind to put the foot there but he, he can pull the foot on target because that that would have been it. otherwise if he can get this angle right and this is a split second decision it's one nil for porto uh and second half more of the same it was not a great game to watch uh it was you know ours are holding the ball porto key keeping it tight and making a foul and don't allow ours Arsenal to get in any car and late on i mean you think it's going to a nil nil and then Martinelli has the ball, uh, it's just a few seconds to play. And instead of keeping the ball, he plays it forward, the ball doesn't, the pass does, does, doesn't go right, Porto can right, go, go right back, uh, and Galeno takes the ball and puts it in, into net, where yes, Sarai is probably off his line uh, uh, too much. Uh, it was a brilliant shot, but did not look uh, good on the goalkeeping department as well. And so if you are Arsenal, it's a really damning loss, I gotta say. Uh, and then we had, on paper, Napoli against Barcelona. Sounds beautifully. However, they have met now quite a bit and every time I feel it's not living up to what this could be. I mean, it is the Maradona Derby, it is the Italian against the Spanish champions. But both teams are in such a bad shape at the moment that it is really not a great game. To be fair, Barcelona were definitely the better of the two teams. And new coach Calzone, I mean, you fire Mazzari. Yes, it was long coming in a way. They were not good, but you bring in a coach that has only one day to prepare for the Barcelona game. It's not going to work out well, let's put it that way. Uh, I guess a Barcelona team, you know, if Napoli could have preserved a little bit of that form, I think this Barcelona team is ripe for the taking for Napoli. Absolutely. But so Barcelona were the better team, clearly. I mean, Napoli didn't have a shot on goal. But Barcelona didn't produce much either. Barcelona had loads of possession, uh, controlled the game, especially at the beginning of the first half. The Napoli could even it up, but uh, were rather timid in the entire thing. And the 60th minute, Pedri plays it to level, 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 level Lewandowski in a really nice move. Lewandowski scores, and you thought this is it. However, they just cannot move, it cannot also double, double or keep or, or keep, keep it tight and then Grisa plays a ball to Ozeman where uh, the Barca defense in Igor Martinez uh, does not look good. I mean, there were some arguments, was was the foul? I actually thought at the first, first, first replay. If Ozeman, uh, who stumbles, doesn't pull in on that, there's maybe even a point for a penalty. Others say that Ozeman fouled uh, Inigo Martinez, whatever it is. Araujo lost his man and Ozeman Scores the equalizer was a little bit flattering to Napoli, it has to be said. But 1-1, it ends. And so it is all even Stevens going into the return leg. If we look, I mean, it's pretty clear the winner of the evening uh, of, of the four game have to be Porto. Inter 
Also, uh, with, with the move, Barcelona and Dortmund will also really like their 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 results. So it's basically. Um, as we would would expect there. Uh, overall, fa fa favorites. I mean, Arsenal took a big dip in that one, uh, losing now their slight outsiders. Although I still think they will probably beat Porto. Same thing as I still think the Bayern will beat Lazio. But actually, that cost them in the rankings. Now Inter in third place, and PSG move up into fourth. Also, a little bit out of nowhere. Return legs, we take a little bit of a break, uh, one week break, and then in March we have Bayern against Lazio, Real Sociedad against PSG. I think the Bayern Lazio one will be a big one now that Tuchel has announced that he will be leaving at the end of the season. Will this open up things? Let's uh, see about that. Then City, Copenhagen, and Real Madrid, Leipzig, pretty much foregone conclusions. I think this is an evening that you potentially can take off. Uh, then some rough watching on the 12th of March. And then I think on the 13th of March, we will have a little bit of drama again. And that will be very interesting to see. In any case, let me know what you thought about the Champions League action this week. A little bit the Champions League stops living up to its name. And I think it doesn't help. It really doesn't help that you stretch out this knockout stage over two weeks. I think a little bit more compactness would help because then you would have more games and it would feel a little bit more eventful overall. In any case, I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!